Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I got a fun one today. We're going to learn how to do In My Dreams by Dokken. So George Lynch, one of my favorite guitar players of all time. He's got a killer guitar style. And this song is my favorite Dokken song. It's, I think it's just really musical. It's got everything going. It's got a great chorus. It's got a gr great vocals, great verse, great main riff, great pre-chorus, awesome solo by George. So. Um, I hope you guys enjoy going through it with me here. We're gonna take a look at all the riffs, uh, all the little overdubs too, the little fills. So some of them are two guitar parts, and of course, George's solo, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ring the notification bell so you know it's a new video. You can like and comment, you can watch the videos. It really, really helps, even if you hate the song I'm teaching. Just let it run, just let it play. And um, if you really wanna support what I do here on YouTube, um, best way to do it is join my Guitar Academy, and that also gives you full, access to all my courses, so you get something out of it too. Uh, you'll see a link to that in the description below. Uh, that link will give you a free seven day trial. And uh, it contains, you get one subscription, access to the entire online guitar school, all the courses for, from courses for complete beginners to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. I'm live every weekend, just a live stream, so just Academy members, so they can ask me questions in real time every week. And you get personalized support from me beyond that, so please go check it out. All right, so first of all, I am uh, tuned down a half step. So uh, you can call that E flat or D sharp standard, or E flat standard, whatever it is. Um, uh, I'll put the notes in the description, but it's, it's E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, E flat, E flat. So everything tuned down a half step. Um, or if your tuner reads sharps, it's gonna be that sixth string is gonna be a D sharp. And then it's gonna be a G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, D sharp. So most tuners read sharps now, but uh, anyway. So um, let's take a look at that main riff. So that's gonna start with this. So is there's a quick little between before the riff, the beginning of the riff every time, it's like a quick little quick little muted open E string. It's really palm muted pretty well, so it's, it's hidden in there. But you do that first and then slide into the seventh fret there on the low E. And then play five seven on the A. From there, we're gonna go to this E power chord off the seventh fret of the A string. And you can hit the low E string uh, uh, in the root of that chord. So this one. And then we kind of do that riff again. But this time, the power chord after it is gonna be at the fifth fret of the A. So this. And then we do that riff again. But now the power chord will be at the third fret, the C power chord. So when you get to the C power chord, it starts working its way back up. Goes, you play that C power chord, then you hit the open A string muted. Just hit it once. Then you hit that D power chord, the fifth fret there. Then that open A again. And then up, back up to that E, which once again, whenever you're playing this chord, you can hit, hit the open E in the, in the base of it. So it is. Then it kind of starts over. And then uh, we have this little, the ending here at the in the intro of the song. So it starts with a C power chord, that open A string in the, there, and then up to the D power chord, and then we're gonna go a, a G power chord. So you could play like that. If I'm seeing play live, like that's power chord. But on the recording, you can hear that kind of open G power chord. It's a, it's a bigger sound. It's got the open strings here. You can hear them; they vibrate a little bit um, wider than the uh, fretted notes. And, you hear the top notes in there too. So. so it says G power chord. Now what is a G power chord? It's like a regular G major chord, but you're gonna mute the A string. 
So it's an open G power chord. Into an A power chord. So. All right, so now over this riff, we hear this little clean guitar thing that comes in. I'm not gonna little dial in a clean tone here. I'll just use the same one, just roll it off a little bit. Um, but that, this comes in, so if you have a second guitar player in your group that you want to play uh, this song with, um, have them do this. So that's just the very end there. So we're going to start here with the uh, fourth fret there on the G, and then open high. So hold the fourth fret on the G and the fifth fret there on the B. And you're just going to pick. That, um, the G string there, and then pick a cross on the high E to the G a couple times. And then, then the same thing down here now at the second fret. So it's the second fret on the G, third fret there on the B, open high E. So we have to then we have the open G, open high E, open B. So this. Then back to the previous chord, just kind of picking from the G, high E to the B, and then you're gonna do this, which is just really kind of the open D and the G, and the third fret there on the B, into the kind of an A major chord. All right, so that's that little fill that happens there. Well, it's not a fill, it's just kind of an, a, a guitar layer that happens over that main riff. And it's gonna happen pretty much every time you hear it. All right, and then we have the verse. So, very cool. So we're gonna, it's got a great vocal melody over that. So all he's doing is uh, gonna hit the open A and D first. And then play the second fret across the A and the D. Then you kind of chug on that low E power chord. Kind of add the uh, low E string into that. So kind of heavily palm muted there. And then uh, we're gonna do this, uh, the first ending, after you've done that. Then we're gonna go the C power chord off the third fret of the A, up to the E power chord off the seventh fret there, and then the D back here at the fifth fret twice. And then back to that riff. And then a little bit different ending is gonna go. So that's gonna be that C power chord again, but then switch to that G, open G power chord. And this open D power chord, which is gonna be open D string, second from the G, third from the B. You can hit the open A in there, I always love doing that on the D power chord. So. And then we get to this pre-chorus riff. Into the chorus there. So a very cool riff there. Um, we're gonna start. So that's gonna start with this seventh fret there on the A, ninth fret on the D. So you have some right or E power chord, and then hit that those two strings, and then hammer on the tenth fret there on the D. And then back to the nine, and then seven on the A on the D string. I'm sorry, it's an A note. So seven across the A and the D. So. Right on that. Kind of hit that low E in there in between it sometimes. Sorry. And then it's gonna go to this. It's a, 
it's a G power chord here. Well, you're just playing the D in the bass. So you're basically going to be playing the fifth fret across the A and the D, and then the seventh fret there on the G. And then it's an A major chord with uh, uh, the third in the bass. So it's a first inversion A major, which is going to be the uh, fourth fret there on the a string and then the second part across the D and the G. So So after you've done that three times, you're gonna go over to that D power chord. So you hit that D power chord, let that ring, and then you're gonna hit the open D string real quick. The next time you do the pre-chorus, you're not gonna hit that open D string. It's just, gonna, it's just gonna do that. But this first time you hear it, you're gonna hit this open D, and then you hit the open D string, and then you open A. Then the fourth fret on the A, slightly bent into um, an A power chord. So it's over to the third fret on the low E, that G note, and back to the A power chord, and then back to that G there in the low E string. So we have this. So all together for the, the uh, pre-chorus. So you'll notice that when I'm doing the beginning of I don't really have that low E kind of ringing all up. And then the second half I kind of muted. All right, then we get to the chorus. Now the chorus has two guitar parts as well here. There's a little one of those arpeggiated clean things again. So, but the actual chorus riff, the main riff, if you have one guitar, you're going to play this one. So back into that riff. So, um, we basically have this, it's pretty simple, E power chord, to that C power chord off the third fret of the A, down to the B, one fret lower, and then back to the E power chord, and then a few chugs on that, a little muted chug. So we have this. Repeat that. And then here, C up to the D power chord, and then we're going to transition back to that main riff by going kind of the, the ending of the main riff by going that C power chord, open A, D, open A, and when you get to that E, uh, you're at, back at the main riff again. So. All right, now over that, we have that little, little arpeggiated thing too that happens, it looks like this. All right, so, so that's just kind of based off of even. E minor first, so it's going to be open E, second fret there on the A, and then the open G. Then the next one's going to be third fret there on the A, fifth on the D, then the open G. Then take this down one fret in the same picking pattern. So it's still two on the A, four on the D, open G, and then back to the G. So the 
Then when we pick the, through the chords again, it's gonna be slightly different. So right there, so on that B. So this is the same, the E is the same, the C is the same, but here, instead of going from the A to the D to the G, we're gonna go A to the G, and then back to the um, D. You can almost, it almost sounds like there's a pull. But I think it's just picking the A, open G, and then the fourth fifth on the D, and then back to the So that's pretty much it. All right, so it goes back to the main riff, and this main riff kind of cuts off halfway through just to get back to the verse. So it's like... So it's got that kind of thing going. So we start the main riff. Back up to the E. And when you're gonna do the repeat, do that first little, and then jump to the verse. So it's the same verse, same pre-chorus, same chorus that we did before. And then it gets to George's killer guitar solo. So let me play through that solo for you real quick and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. So that solo has got some amazing stuff in it that uh, is extremely challenging, but he's, start, he's got the coolest guitar solo style of just about any guitar of his gener any generation, really. He's just very tricky and slick and slippery. It's just really, really cool. Anyway, so let's get through this solo. So the first phrase... Uh, we're gonna start with a bend here. Um, Bending release at the second fret on the, the G. Slide into the fifth fret. And then slide into the seventh. And then you're gonna hit a kind of a touch, uh, I'm sorry, a tap harmonic. So when you slide to the seven on the G, you're gonna tap over the 14th fret on the, um, uh, so seven frets up from it. So you get that seven fret harmonic. Uh, seven, seven frets above harmonic. And then you're gonna slide up to the ninth fret and then tap the 14th again. And now you're gonna get that fifth fret harmonic, which is a higher pitch harmonic. All right, and then we have this. So that's gonna slide into the ninth fret there on the D string. So that kind of so it's out of that D over to the twelfth fret on the G. So after he's he's kind of doing you got that little melody going on the G. You're gonna you keep going back and doing the hitting the D a few times in between. So. That's the melody note on the G. So you just kind of go back and hit the, uh, the that ninth fret. You're holding the D a couple times between each one. And then, so it is. So you're kind of sliding into the tenth fret on the uh, D string. You're gonna pull off twelve to nine on the G. And then back down to that D uh, string there, that 10th fret of the D hit a couple times, I think, on just kind of a palm muted. So. And then really the same thing, a fret lower. Except you don't slide into it. Uh, 
actually, if you want to go, it goes eight, nine on the G to end it. You hit that with a pinch harmonic if you want. All right, now from there we have this. So, so that's got kind of some quick string crossing there. That would probably be easier to do with hybrid picking, but he picks it though. So he's actually using his pick for those notes. It wouldn't sound as good with hybrid picking anyway. But anyway, we, we have here, up here at the 14th fret. So I'm just going, this is the pedal, the, the pedal tone that is basically a tone that you keep going back to in between each note. Kind of like what we're doing here, but this is just going to go back and hit the tone once between each one. So we're just going to be doing a melody on the G string. You're going to start with that note on the D, that's the 14th fret, and then roll over to the 14th fret on the, on the G. And then, once again, we're going to do a melody. And in between each one of those notes, you're going to come back and hit the note on the D string there at the 14th fret. Palm muted. So this is all palm muted. So the notes on the G string are just 14, 16, 17, then 14, 16, 17 again, and then just 14, 16. And like I said, you're going to come back and hit this note between before and then in between each one. All right, then this next lick is really classic Georgian. So he's, he does these really quick slides um, all the time. And so we're, we're going to be doing this kind of based off of a blue scale. So he's going to pick the, uh, there's, you can hear this pinch harmonic, so he's kind of really kind of emphasizing some notes there. So we're going to, so we're going to start with just uh, the 14th fret on the G, slide up to 15, pull back, I mean slide back down to 14, pull off to 12. And then over to the, the 14th fret on the D, so that's the note we're going to resolve the lick to. And then he basically kind of does the lick twice again on the G. He does it twice. And then resolves it to the 14th fret there on the D. So the second time through that little sequence. So And then we're going to do this next little phrase. So that's going to be a bend at the 14th fret there on the G. And then 12, 13 on the B, and then back into that bend on the G string. On the night at the 14th fret and release that bend. And then just kind of, I pick it just to kind of, so it keeps ringing. All right, now we get to that really cool legato lick. So this legato lick, uh, when you see him in the in the video, you see him like kind of like picking it. Uh, but there's there's no pick noise on there. And then and they show another shot, and he's just doing a legato. So I, it's, I think it's legato. It was, when you listen to the recording, there's no like pick attack on there. So anyway, so he's gonna start it with a little bit. So let, first of all, it's a massive stretch. So you're gonna. You think that one's big? It gets bigger towards the end. So we're going to be 12. Uh, we get the 12th fret and the 15th fret there on the on the um, high E string. So it starts with a couple quick little trill to start between those two notes. You got to use those fingers, which sucks. And then what you're going to do is the actual pattern of the legato lick is you're going to tap this top note. So this is all the way up to the 19th fret there. So we have a seven fret stretch here. We're going to tap 19, pull off to 12, hammer on that 15 again, and pull back off to 12. So that's a lick. It's a four note lick. So after you get started, a couple of those, then you start to lick.
And if you're having too much fun with that, we'll ramp up the difficulty a little, a little bit. We're going to move the pinky to the 20th fret. So now we have an 8th fret stretch. So, um, yeah. Same lick, though. Tapping that top note of the 20th fret, pull off to the 12th, hammer on 15, pull off to 12. Then he works his way back down to um, 19 now. No, it doesn't seem as hard, does it? So we basically do that. All right, so it's basically starting with a little troll there and then the 19th fret version of the riff and then up to 20 and then back to 19. Very, very cool, very painful. Now, we're going to then do this quick descending. Now, he's picking this, but if you I, I'm gonna listen to the isolated track, the notes that he's doing, you can tell he's going across an E minor scale, but it's not really definitive exactly um, each note. Um, so it doesn't really come out, at least on the, the recording I listen to. So you can kind of tell where he starts the riff. You can tell he's all trying to do this fast alternate picking stuff across the strings. And he starts from two different points. So we're just going to th think of it that way. It goes across an E minor scale. So, so it's going to start here. I'm going to pretend every note is picked and, and resolved and picked cleanly. So, I'm sorry, not that. So anyway, we're going to do that. So we're going to start here at 20th fret, 1917 on the high E. Then we're going to go same thing on the B. From there, we're going to go 1917 on the G. Now you're going to notice I used this finger instead of this. Why? Because it's part of the scale anyway, but that's how you want to play that scale. It's that three notes per string scale there. But, but this, when I play this right here, this uh, seven, so 1917, this 17 with my uh, middle finger, it allows me to jump back up to the high E string. Now we continue to play down the E minor scale from this note, all the way down to the root, the E there, at the um, 17th fret. So from there, so we have this so far, and then we're gonna go back up to the um, 17th fret on the high E string. Then 20, 19, 17 on the B. 19, 16, I'm um, 19, 17, 16 on the G. Same thing on the D. 19, 17, 16. And then end it there at the 19th fret on the um, A string with that E. Now, um, so. If, you, if you, want, you want to pick all those notes, the easiest way, just a little tip, start with the upstroke. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier. From there, we have this huge bend. So that's at the 20th fret here, and what he's doing is he's doing, he's uh, catching both strings, so he's gonna, do a huge bend in the 20th fret, and he's gonna get that G string under his finger as well. And then they both kinda. So you kinda hear both those strings. That's why it sounds like really kinda dissonant and like, you know, pretty intense. So, then he goes back into like a kind of bend with a, a lot of vibrato just on the normal 20 on the B. And then we're gonna end the solo with this. So that's just a bend at the 17th fret on the B. And then, and then that's 17, 15 on the B, and then 16, 14 on the G. Now you'll see in the video, he, he do, does that, but it sounds like just on the rec actual recording, it's just vibrato. So you can, you can do it like. And that is it for the solo. So now coming to that solo, it goes back into that main riff again um, and into this, the same chorus that we covered before. And then there's this little acapella section. And when they come out of that acapella section, 
it's the chorus again. It's kind of this outro chorus, uh, but it's it's different than the previous chorus riff. So it's a little bit different. So what's really going on with this chorus variation? It kind of starts off with this. So it, it kind of starts with that riff, and it's really kind of the second ha half of the riff that they're going to be going into. So um, we can have like this this e same kind of chorus riff we did before, but then we're going to do this. Then we're going to have this different ending: this E power chord to the C, up to the D power chord, A power chord. Now from there, we're gonna do this act the full, it kind of starts that way, so it's kind of confusing if you're not hearing the vocals with it, uh, but it makes a lot of sense when you hear the vocals with it and when they come in. Uh, but then, so the actual riff now, from the actual beginning of the riff, remember they played this second half of it first, and then they go into this. So that was kind of the same thing here. Except here, the second time through, we're gonna do this. So it had that little extra thing added to it. When you get to the B uh, power chord, you're gonna slide it back up, half, uh, half step to the C, and then back down to the B. So the first half of it is basically that. It's normal. Then that little slide. Now we're gonna do that section that we came in with, which is starting one time with a riff normal. And then that up to the D. And the A. And then repeat. So the whole riff there, that outro chorus from the real beginning of the riff, um, not that little, well, how they play that little ending first. It's just this. <laughs> So just like that. All right, so that is about it. It's a it's my it's probably my favorite Dawkins song. It's just really musical and uh, it's just got great vocals, an amazing guitar solo, really cool verse. Uh, really cool pre-chorus, just and then just an awesome main riff. It's pretty simple to play, but it's just iconic. So, so it's got it. It's got it all going. All right, hope you guys loved it. I'm sure loved teaching it. So I'll see you guys again soon for Guitar Lessons365.com.